we would again like to welcome you to Hadley Matters. We'll be talking about matters that matter. Our producer is Jane Nevin Smith. Our program director is Violet Suska. And I, Sharon Howard, am the lead interviewer. Today we have with us a very important person in Hadley, Randy Iser, who is your town moderator. And as I said to you, Randy, I'm really a virgin about town meeting. I've never been to a town meeting. I've never seen a town moderator in action. Tell me about your job. Tell me what you do as a moderator. Now, there's uh, basically two things that I do. Number one is run the town meetings, one typically in the spring, which is called the annual town meeting, one in the fall, which is a special town meeting. Uh, so I have to make sure the meeting runs smoothly, make sure people get to speak mm -hmm. when they want to, uh, help people understand what they're voting for, uh, things of that nature. And the other thing that I do is appoint the finance committee. Ah, but that's the, that's the only committee you're involved with in that kind of way. Yes. Do you always have a special town meeting? Is that an annual thing that happens, or is special, does special mean it's special? Well, as long as I can remember, we've always had a special fall town meeting. Is, but it, it's not mandatory, but okay. it typically happens in Hadley. And why does it happen? Do you know that? Well, there are issues that cannot be addressed at the spring town meeting, the annual town oh, yeah. meeting, uh, due to factors such as the state didn't provide the town with some uh, tax numbers or valuations of whatever it might be. So we don't have enough information to settle some, some certain issues in the spring, so we need to do it in the fall. Okay. So as a moderator, I'm interested in, it's an interesting word to me. A moderator, I expect to be moderate, right? Correct. You don't, you know, you're not cheering for the Boston Red Sox over the New York Yankees, although I can't imagine that. But tell me what your view of your role is. So my role is to not choose sides, to be moderate, if you will, uh, just to let everyone have their chance to speak, whether they're for or against, mm -hmm. And whether I'm for or against is something that should not be known to the people that attend the town meeting. So it is what we expect, those of us who are sports fans, it is what we expect out of an umpire or a referee, do not take sides. Correct. You I, do that in your life, Randy? Yes, <laughs> I have. I have. It's been a while since I've done it due to the pandemic, but I used to referee high school soccer games. And a soccer official and a town meeting moderator's roles are very similar. Hmm. Make sure everybody plays by the rules. When they don't, deal with it and keep everybody's, you know, keep everybody with a cool head and <laughs> let's get, get through the, the meeting or the game. How long have you been moderating? This will be my third year at, in, for the town of Hadley and I was moderator at First Congregational Church in Hadley for about 10 years. So would you say that you faced some tense situations as a moderator sometimes, or even as a soccer coach? Oh, most definitely, <laughs> more so as a soccer coach so far. Uh -huh. uh, in the time I've been town moderator, we haven't had anything overly contentious. So the meetings have been relatively smooth and uh, not too many issues that felt uh, tense, if you will. Good. So let's talk a little bit about what a town meeting is. I think one of the things I don't understand always is why a town has a town meeting. What are other forms of governing a town the size of Hadley? Where does a town meeting come from? Historic, you know, all that kind mm -hmm. of thing. Well, town meeting has been in Massachusetts since there have been settlers, English settlers in Massachusetts. That's how the, uh, the, the town meeting is the legislative body 
of the town. Okay. So that's how we decide how to what bylaws we want to enact, uh, how to spend the tax dollars, okay. uh, things of that nature. Uh, other towns, have, we, Hadley has what's called an open town meeting, meaning anybody that lives in the town that's registered to vote can come to the meeting and voice their opinion and vote on the uh, articles, and I'll get to that that are part of the, the warrant for that particular meeting. Uh, Amherst used to be what's called you know, RTM. What does the R stand for? Is that representative? Repres yes, meeting? representative town meeting, which means they have people that are elected to represent various areas in town. Like so, our federal government. Right. Okay. Right. So they, they may have 10,000 citizens that are registered to vote, but they may only have 120 representatives that go to these town meetings. Understood. And that, they did away with, Amherst did away with that, now they have town council or city council, whatever they call it. Uh, I know East Hampton has a city council and a mayor, so there's three or four different ways that towns can govern themselves in, in that mm -hmm. respect. So is Hadley kind of becoming a dying, dying breed, a dying form of government? Well, in it, I guess it depends on how you look at it. I think it's a good thing because if there is an issue that somebody is concerned about, they can come and voice their opinion. Mm -hmm. They don't have to count on somebody else to do it for them. So it, to your point, more and more towns are doing away with it, but there's still plenty of towns that have town meetings still. But it's kind of a uniquely New England, would you say, form of government, or do you, am I getting too far beyond your knowledge? That I can't answer. I know it's definitely New England. Beyond that, I am not sure. How many people do you usually get to turn out for town meeting? Well. We have a, a minimum requirement, which is called our quorum. Okay. That's 100. Yes. So if we don't get 100 registered voters to come to a meeting, we can't have it. So we haven't had that happen on my watch, Good. fortunately. Mm -hmm. And we've had anywhere from 125 to close to 200. And depending upon the issues that are on the warrant, mm -hmm. uh, that determines how many people come. Okay. Remind me of how many te uh, people are in registered voters. Do you know are in the Hadley? And if you don't, Jane probably does. 3,600, something 3, like that. 3,600? I think so, somewhere in that ballpark. So you get 125 to 200 of 3,600 Act for a town meeting. Yeah. Got any thoughts on why that is, Randy? Uh, there's numerous reasons. Okay. Life is busy. Okay. Uh, so people have things that are they feel are more important. Um, the issues that are on the warrant may not be meaningful to them on a personal level, mm -hmm. so they want they may not want to come. Uh, certainly, COVID has kept people away. Yes. Uh, so you know, for any kind of different reasons. Lots of reasons. Yes. I want to. Uh, we have a flow chart because one of my questions for you is what's the role of town meeting? Who's really in charge of town? And I think we can put up a flow chart that shows the importance of town meeting. Mm -hmm. So talk a little bit about that. To answer your question, who runs the town? The voters of the town run, run it. They are guided by the select board, the various, you know, the school committee, the planning board, assessors, everybody in town hall uh, puts together the articles on the warrant, and I suppose we should talk about that before uh, we get into this so good, much. Good so, idea. So the town meeting has what's called a warrant which is basically a compilation of what is called articles. And articles are s simplified 
questions that gets asked of the town's voters, do you want to do this or not? Okay, so if you wanted a new fire engine, just to take an example, you would have to come to town meeting, is that correct? Correct. And I say, will we vote the money for? Right, and typically that's something that the select board would do. Mm -hmm. uh, it's part of the budget. Uh, they work with finance committee on that. Uh, there's a capital planning committee. Mm -hmm. So they all work to decide, you know, there's only X amount of dollars that the town has every year to spend. Yes. So we have to figure out how to spend it wisely. And the we is? The voters. The voters. The voters. So that's why it's important to get as many right. voices there. Is right. That right? Yeah. Correct. Okay. You got a town meeting coming up, right? Correct. Uh, date, time? May 22nd, 1 p.m. at Hopkins Academy. It's going to be outdoors. Okay. Uh, we did it last spring okay. outdoors. There will be uh, COVID guidelines followed, so six feet apart if you're not living with somebody kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Masks are going to be required. Good. Uh, and we're going to hope for beautiful weather. Okay. Last year it was quite warm. <laughs> and you, I assume, have a rain date if the well, heavens open? Technically, the rain date is the following day. Okay. And we'll see how it's not it's not an automatic okay it's just like the the 22nd is a hopeful uh -huh. so if the weather is bad or something weird happens uh, earthquake mm -hmm. or tornado whatever and we can't have the meeting we're going to hope we can do it the next day but we have to wait we're, we will say we're going to reschedule to tomorrow at one o'clock same place how do I know that as a, as a person? I'm going to town meeting, I get up and it's kind of yucky out there, but I'm not sure. How do I know whether I should go or not? Well, that is a good question because I've never had to deal with that. I'm going to assume it would be on the website, the town's website. Okay. Uh, and you should probably call somebody that would be in the know. You're leaving your phone number with all these folks? No, <laughs> no thank you. Uh, but I think that if it's any kind of rain, I don't think we're going to be able to do it because yeah. part of being at the meeting is everybody's going to have a packet of paper, the mm -hmm. warrant. Oh. And if it rains, it's going to get wet. True. Not to mention the people will get wet. So I don't think it's going to happen if it rains. So let's move along to process, okay? I'm going to go to town meeting for the first time. Mm -hmm. So I pull into the parking lot over at Hopkins, yeah. and I walk up to wherever, is there some place I go to when I get out of my car? So there is a registration, typically two registration tables, very similar to what happens when you go to vote. Oh. So you walk in, walk up to where the registration is taking place, it's going to be the same thing, A through M, L through Z, whatever, however they do it. You have to give your name and address. They check off, make sure that you are registered to vote. If you're registered to vote, they give you a, a voting card, not a, a card that is, it's, it's a signal more than anything. It's like an auction card. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then you come in and wait for the meeting to start. Okay. So the meeting starts and you're going to present the warrant, everybody will have a packet with all the articles on the warrant in, in it. Mm -hmm. How do you decide, do you take the, what you consider might, more people might be interested in, do you take that first, or how do you order those articles? I don't order the articles, select board does that. Okay. So it's at their discretion. Okay. Um, and there is no real, that I'm aware of, no mm -hmm. method to how they do that. Okay. Uh, but to your underlying point, I think, um, do you try to s uh, intersperse throughout the meeting some interesting articles to keep people's attention? Uh, that is probably a good idea. 
<laughs> we'll pass that on to the select board. Okay. <laughs> um, am I going to be intimidated by the language? You know, I get into a Robert's Rules meeting and I don't know the process and I get, I get uptight about that mm -hmm. because I don't want to speak up because I don't know whether it's okay or not. So are there moments, if there are things that people would need to know like that? Well, usually the way it works is if we, we, an article is presented and then the voters get a chance to speak if they choose to. And when we're not in a pandemic situation and we meet indoors, we have two microphones typically set up at the front of the room in, on two aisles. And people that want to speak walk up to the microphone and wait their turn. They have to be recognized by the moderator before they speak. Okay. And I try to go back and forth. And one thing that I require is if you speak once and you want to speak again, you have to wait. So let's say that you were first in line mm -hmm. and you spoke and then you went set back and sat down and oh I wanted to ask another question. You come back up and you're in line and there's ten people behind you. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna say, Sharon, I know you're here, but you gotta wait till these other people get a chance to talk and then I'll let you talk again. So that part is relatively simple. The the procedures part is usually doesn't take too much effect on things except for two situations that I can think of and one is if there's been a fair amount of discussion about an, ar an article mm -hmm. and somebody decides that they've had enough they can come up to the microphone and say Mr. Moderator I move or call the question. And again, the question is the article. Okay. And by moving it, that says, I, we're done. I think we should be done talking. Let's move on. Let's, let's vote oh. on the question. So if somebody were to do that, so then that is basically a motion. Okay, yes. a motion yes. to, to call the question. So it has to be seconded by somebody, which means that somebody has to agree that it's time to do that, and then it has to be voted on. And it requires a two-thirds majority. So two-thirds of the people that are at the meeting have to agree that they've had enough, okay? And do you, is that eyeballing it, or is that, uh, do you ever have to do it to hand count things? Well, I haven't had the hand count yet, okay. but I have had to do a head count. Okay. Uh, either myself or if it gets too difficult based on the the setup of the venue, then I will <coughs> excuse me ask some people to help me mm -hmm. to count. Okay. And that also uh, keeps things transparent. Mm -hmm. Good. So if, again, I'm I am supposed to be moderate, but I you know it's easy for somebody to think that somebody isn't. So yes. rather than leave that out, we just get some other people to count and, and verify it that way. Okay. Okay. And then the other issue becomes an amendment right. to an article. Oh, okay. So right. you've got an article on the warrant, you read that, and somebody says, Randy, I'd like to amend that. Correct. So basically what they're saying the is, I don't agree completely with the language of that article. Mm -hmm. So they make a motion to amend. Okay. And so that has to be brought forth, written on paper, oh, okay. so that the moderator can read it back. Mm -hmm. And again, that would require a second, because uh, they're making a motion to amend. Yes. So a second, and then that has to be voted on, and that I, is a majority vote. Okay. So, and th at that point, we would discuss the amended, the proposed amendment. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So, we get through discussing the amendment, and the amendment has to be relatively similar 
to the original article. Mm -hmm. You can't. Uh, somebody said that we want to buy a fire truck for a hundred thousand dollars, and somebody said, "Well, no, I'd rather spend that hundred thousand dollars on a playground at the school." That's that's not called, a no, That's called what's yeah. out of scope of the original article, and that is not allowed. Okay. Okay. So it's got to be very very similar to what's being proposed originally. Could they say, I don't want to spend 100000 I want to spend 90000 Yes. That, that would be an amendment? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Good. Okay. So then, so we talk about the proposed amendment, mm -hmm. then we vote on that. Okay. If it gets shot down, mm -hmm. we go back to the original, original article. Mm -hmm. If it gets approved, the amendment, so we vote on the amendment, it yep. gets approved, then we vote on the amended article. So you could have two votes if there's an amendment. Yeah, it, and that's that's typically when things get confusing. That's what I was, yeah, yeah. that's what I thought. Yeah. Let's go back to that flow chart. Do you uh -huh. want to do that? Sure. Um, one of my questions for Randy really was, do you really need to go to town meeting? You know, I, uh, how important is it? to go to town meeting. And I guess I'd always thought that all those people we hire in town are the people who really have this last say or the run. And I'm very clear now that that's not true. That is not true. So the reason you want to go to town meeting is to let your fellow citizens know how you feel about things. If you agree with something, you know, if you agree with things, and that's probably that would be a reason why people wouldn't come. If they look, they look at the warrant and say, all right, I have no problem with that, 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 I'm fine with it. Why should I go? Yes. But if you disagree with it. <laughs> you're more likely to show up. You're more likely to show up, yes. And the, the, the flow chart, the people, the boards and committees you talk about, they're basically advisors for the voters. So we elect them or appoint them or however they get to the position they're in to advise the voters as to how they feel is the best way to spend the town's money and to, to, you know, to update the bylaws or add bylaws and things like that. So you don't, we don't always agree with everybody. And if, if we did, then the world would be a sad place. <laughs> Well, I like it. It feels very democratic because one of the things that happens with all the federal news is, I think, what, but why are you doing that? And it's not what I want mm -hmm. or whatever. And right. in a smaller venue like Hadley, your voice matters. Yes, it does. Yes, for That's sure. Wonderful. Yeah. All right, so people should turn up to town meeting on, do it again. May 22nd, 1 p.m., Hopkins Academy, athletic fields. It's a Saturday. It's a Saturday. Um, anything that we haven't really talked about, Randy, in terms of what a town meeting is, where the trip wires might be for those of us who don't know them, the importance of town meetings, is there anything about that? Because one question I have for you is why in the world do you want to do this job? <laughs> <laughs> Well, the, the... I mean, I know the pay is fabulous. It is, fabulous. It is yes. tremendous, <laughs> yes. The, the, uh, the reason I do it, I mean, I, t I, I got asked to do it because there was going to be a vacancy. Mm -hmm. And with my previous experience as a church moderator mm -hmm. and as a, 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 a soccer right. official, I felt like I had the skills mm -hmm. to do it. And it's it's not a position that too many people are interested in okay. so I figured I could do my part mm -hmm. and take the job Help the town and out. I have enjoyed it uh -huh. it's the meetings are fine I mean I do a fair amount of prep the you you mentioned Robert's rules before I have. a town meeting in this town in most towns in Massachusetts use what's called town meeting time, which is a compilation of uh, various rules similar to Robert's rules. Mm -hmm. So we use that, excuse me, as our guideline. And I, every year, you know, a month or two before town meeting, I always 
reread it just because it's okay. you just never know what you're going to forget. Okay, okay. And I, there, so there is some sort of a, a set of rules. Yes, rules yes. There, but they're just yeah. not Robert's rules. Right. They're similar, but not exactly. Okay. Okay. So you've been doing this. This will be your third year. Did Correct. you say? Yeah. You feel like you're competent now? You got it all down? Well, What's no. it take? No, I don't. <laughs> What's the term for a moderator, Randy? Right now it's one year. All right. But there is an article on the warrant to make it three years. <laughs> and the reason being, I found, especially these past two years with COVID, it's been really hard to get people. I mean, I feel uncomfortable asking people to sign because of the, the the chance of COVID sure. spreading, yes. and every every time you're up for election or re-election, you have to you have to get people to sign your nomination papers. Oh. So I need to get 32 people to sign, which is not a big deal under normal circumstances. Mm -hmm. But under the current circumstances, it's it's, it's questionable. Harder. Yeah. So yeah. so I. I thought it would make sense to, to make the moderator position three years instead of one. It sounds like there's, I mean, it's, in spite of your background as a church moderator and the soccer official, there's a lot that you kind of have to get into or feel into. And I would think, you know, you'd begin to do that in one year, but that a longer term would make you ever more competent in that role. Most definitely, whether it's a moderator or anything that we choose to do with ourselves, the more we do it, the better we get at it, hopefully. <laughs> and it's uh, similar to uh, lawyers practicing. This is, it's, it's not, I don't look at it as practice, but you're always learning. In mm -hmm. every meeting, something different is going to happen. Mm -hmm. And hopefully, you've got enough experience in similar situations to be able to deal with it. Yes. Quickly and efficiently. Mm -hmm. Do you have a backup? Do you have a sub? Is somebody standing behind you ready to fill in? No. There, we have no assistant moderator or anything that you'd like to, whatever name you want to call it. We, have, we don't have that in this town. And if something were to happen to me where I couldn't make the meeting, for instance, some emergency came up, mm -hmm. the, uh, the meeting would elect a temporary moderator for that day. Okay. okay. Or if there was a question that I felt I needed to speak to, mm -hmm. uh, it's not appropriate for me to be moderator and then be on a side yes. of, of a question or an article. So I would have to recuse myself, step down, and choose somebody to take my place. It could be the town clerk. It could be mm -hmm. one of the select board. Uh, so. Yeah. But there, there is a mechanism to make sure that there's always somebody there. I was also thinking in the long haul, you talked about a one-year term. Um, nobody is being lined up to fill in after, you know, if you do their three years or five years or ten years, anybody else is going to have to step in totally virgin again, or on, but totally new, right? Correct. Yeah. 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 And it's, it's since there's no term limit, mm -hmm. And the desire to do the job is not great <laughs> for many people. Uh, I mean, I, I would assume that unless I started to really do something inappropriate, that I could keep this job as long as I wanted it. Mm -hmm. mm. Okay. Uh, so to your point or question about having a backup, if I don't know when I'm going to leave, if I said, okay, I'm going to do it for three more years or two more years, then it would be time to, to start to groom to somebody. Groom. Good word. To, yes. To take over. Mm -hmm. Good. You talk about term limits and time, and I think I have one other question about, I'm standing at the mic, do I have a time limit if I want to speak to a particular article? Yes. Okay. We try to limit people to three minutes. And usually that's not a problem. Every once in a while, somebody will keep going and going. And depending upon, I mean, it's moderator's discretion. I can, mm -hmm. at three minutes, I can say, nope, done. But they be, could be in the middle of some very important information they're providing to the meeting. So I try to digest what they're saying mm -hmm. and then determine if 
I should let them continue for a little bit or tell them it's time. Good. This uh, next town meeting, how many articles are on the warrant this time? Roughly, uh, I, I have, don't know if you know. Yeah, well, I have the... Uh, oh, and how do I get the warrant? Do I get it ahead of time? You can. Uh, is, is it going to be... Uh, on the website? On the website. It, it'll be on the website. Okay. And there's, they have them at the meeting. But if you're really interested, you get it on the website. Okay. So you can go over everything and, and determine if you feel like you want to come to the meeting or not. Exactly. Um, but there are 28 articles on oh. the warrant right now. That sounds like a lot. If you took, you know, three minutes for every one, you're already in an hour. How long does a town meeting last? Uh, typically three-ish hours, maybe three more. Yeah. Again, depending upon what we're discussing. Okay. Can you squash those 28 in any way? We can. We're, we, we have what's called a consent agenda. So that's the, the first thing we take up when we start dealing mm -hmm. with, the, with the warrant. So what that is, is you try to put as many questions into this consent agenda, or many articles into the consent agenda, as the select board and the moderator feel can be dealt with just by saying, we're going to vote on this, 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 this. We believe there's nothing really to, to discuss. Oh, OK. It's, it's so uh, one vote. One vote, those. right. And there are probably five or six uh, articles, let me see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, there's seven articles on the consent agenda. So now we go from 28 to 21. Yes, good, okay. Tell us a little bit about yourself, Randy. Well. You a ha old Hadley boy? Were you born almost, here? Almost, not quite. Almost. <laughs> I've lived in Hadley since 1966. I'm originally from 54. Yeah. Just a baby. Yeah. Originally yeah. from southern Pennsylvania. Oh, really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. so Amish by nature? <laughs> my, my father's mother is a uh, Mennonite or was Mennonite. Oh, really? So, yes. Okay. So yes. that is not quite up to the same level I as <laughs> Amish. They're allowed a few more liberties. I was teasing you and instead I get a little more insight. That's yeah. great. Yeah. So I went to school in Hadley, starting in third grade, through graduating at Hopkins. Mm -hmm. Went to UMass. Uh, my stepfather started a land surveying business in 1972, which I now own. Oh, okay. Uh, called Harold L. Eaton and Associates. My office is on Route 9 in Hadley, mm -hmm. right in front of Wildwood Barbecue. You sell uh, cars, too. I do. I do. I do sell cars. Um, I have three daughters, three grandchildren, mm -hmm. one wife. Uh, well, there's an unusual statistic these <laughs> days. <laughs> uh, and yeah, that's me in a nutshell. Are your kids around here, your daughters? I have one that lives basically 400 feet away from me. Wow. And she just had a baby six weeks ago. Grandpa. Yeah. The, I have another one who lives in South Hadley. Mm -hmm. She's got the other two grandkids. Okay. And I have one that lives in Seattle. And that's about as far away as you can get. <laughs> Too much and stay in the country. And yeah. Stay in the, yeah. And she's coming home in 10 days. I haven't Looking seen her in a year and a half. It's time. Yes, it is. Coronavirus. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Is there anything else? Randy, that we haven't covered that you might think is important? Well, I, I say this at every town meeting when I, before we start the actual meeting, and that is, if you have a question, please don't hesitate to ask. If you're confused about something, please don't hesitate to say something about it. Don't be afraid to stand up and ask questions. It may feel like You've got 150 people staring at you, but you're no different than the rest of them. <laughs> Just say what's on your mind so that you can walk away feeling like you, you did what you needed to do. That's great. Very, uh, it feels like a democracy to me. What it needs about. to be, yes. That's what it's supposed to be. I love that, yes. 
really appreciate you joining us and uh, hopefully in the next month or two we will have this open and we can have an audience that's live here. All right, our next meeting will be with Patrick at the library and we will be in the library. John will be taking all of his recording equipment over there and we'll be uh, perhaps, I don't know how much of a tour John will be doing, but uh, you'll at least see the inside of the library if you haven't seen it yet. Thank you for joining Hadley Matters because Hadley Matters matter. How's that? No. Very well. <laughs> Good afternoon, y'all. <laughs>